Hello, Maureen. Hello. Is, uh, is that a air humidifier in your background, or what is that machine? No, that is a chair with a cat in it. Oh, this. Chair. This, is my, this is my other chair. No, the the white thing uh, is like looks like a robot. Oh, can you see that? Yeah, that is yeah. an air humidifier. Uh -huh. Very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Call it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see other lessons besides, you know, keeping your hair uh, air nice and humid. Uh, I'm eager to see what you have for us. So share okay. your um, slides if you have any, and uh, we'll discuss All after. All right. Well, all right. Thanks. So I'm Maureen West, uh, technically challenged uh, today, uh, but I'm Senior Director of Content and Product Marketing at Uberflip. If you're familiar with Uberflip, uh, you'll know that we're a content experience platform that able, enables marketers and sellers to create uh, content experiences uh, to accelerate uh, the learning and the learning experience for the buyer and the selling experience for the seller. So a few things about me. Um, I was going to be a professor originally, but then I decided the politics in academia was too much for me and I opted for the politics and technology. They're the same thing. Uh, the majority of my PMM career uh, has been in MarTech, uh, first in ESP, a um, company called Exact Target, uh, then moved into um, other, other uh, types of technology uh, out that were outside of MarTech. One was a two-sided marketplace that was quite interesting. Uh, but then found quickly that MarTech is really my home and I prefer it the most. And so fun fact about me, I like true crime podcasts. However, I do not like watching anything about true crime, just listening to it. Um, and my first lesson disappeared. This is cool. Let's see. Here we go, lesson number one. Alignment is the key to success. So this, um, you know, earlier I heard someone talk about soft skills. This is really important, um, an important soft skill to, to understand and to be able to um, influence your stakeholders and your internal customers to help you be successful. Uh, but don't, don't, uh, don't, mix this up with agreement, right? So agreement is everybody in the room fundamentally understands what you want to do and agrees with what you want to do, but they may not agree why you want to do it or how you want to do it. So getting everyone aligned means that your audience has internalized this idea as their own and is invested in making the change. For, and for, you know, you know we're a very cross-functional um, position and we don't have direct uh, reporting influence over people. So we do have to be influential in other ways and getting them bought into any kind of process change or any kind of change at all, like introducing a new product to the market or um, successfully executing a product launch or changing your messaging and actually having that messaging used during the sales cycle. All of that uh, has to be an internalization of the idea so that your uh, stakeholders want to help you um, to be successful and, and get aligned around that goal. This one, uh, this is not a new lesson, but it is always a, a surprising lesson that I have to um, impart to people um, on the team, around the team. Uh, you have to use your product in order to market it. Um, this is the only way that you're going to understand your user's perspective. So if you are unleashing, you know, something that is going to delight them, you can now share that delight uh, because you've experienced it. Uh, if perhaps there is a beta product, your team should be using it so you can give direct feedback to the product team, hey, you know, I don't really understand how to use this, or I understand how to do steps one through three, but then I really get lost and I'm not sure that I've accomplished the task that I need to. So getting in into the product and using the product is really key. Also, if you can try to break the product, not purposefully, but it, if you can figure out, you know, ways that there is another way to use it, or somebody might click a different button than intended and it 
it produces an error result, that's good feedback for the product team as well, because maybe they designed the user interface a little bit, you know, it's a little bit confusing or the workflow doesn't really make any uh, sense. So, um, you know, you have that, that way to uh, give feedback directly because you have used it. And the last lesson is con context is everything. So scene setting for your message to be understood. The best example I have of this is I worked for a company based out of um, Vienna, Austria. And although everyone was speaking English, I think every um, the throughout the entire company, there were something like 43 different languages um, that were, you know, that were used uh, throughout their different regions. So even though we were all speaking English, we would be in a meeting and people would leave the meeting with completely different understanding of uh, what is, you know, what the, the task was or what the goal was. So helping people understand that context, you know, uh, around the meaning means that your message is much better understood. So another way to think of this is, you know, your buying committee. We know that the buying committee is growing every year, right? Let fewer people want to make the, the, the investment decision to buy a tool. And we all know that tools like MarTech require more than just marketing to be bought in uh, to use the tool effectively, especially for ABM programs. So you need to get sales on board. Uh, but you have to be able to you know, put context into your message so the buyer understands it. They're coming to the table with different perspectives. Sales has a different understanding of the job that they need to do. And marketing has a different understanding of the job that they need to do. And in terms of your solution, they both have to be able to see value and understand what's happening. So setting the scene for your uh, buyers is incredibly important. And you know, if we think about what's happened in the last three years, I mean, the, the world has gotten effectively much smaller um, with everyone on Zoom. Uh, you know, the idea that you have to live in the city where your job is has virtually gone away. Uh, and now we have uh, this wonderful exposure to all sorts of different cultures and languages and perspectives and filters, which, mean, which means context is even more important today than it was in the past. So thinking through the different perspectives of your audience can help you really nail your messaging and make sure that they walk away with the intended understanding to a certain degree. All right, where is my, there we go. And uh, my key product marketing priority for 2023 is to ruthlessly prioritize projects. We all have this problem, uh, especially since we are serving three different areas. Uh, everyone comes to you with, you know, this is a priority that we need to solve and it needs to be solved now. Um, I have a very lean team. Uh, between content and product marketing, there are three of us. So... I have to take this to heart and make sure that I use data to diagnose if this is a real problem uh, or if this is a if this is something that can be resolved with a, a with an asset that we already have or with a talking point that we already have or a battle card that we already have. So getting to uh, you know to the nut of is it a real problem? And if it is a real problem, great, we've identified it, but now we have to triage it and if we determine that this is something that is a high priority, then I need to look at the rest of my list and say, okay, I have this other priority. If this new priority is taking precedent, then this second priority is going to be moved down and I will not deliver it on the date originally uh, discussed. Is that okay with you? So again, going back to alignment, that's another way to get alignment. Ha having conversations like that making sure everyone is aware of what, uh, what is happening and what you need to do, what's on your plate, uh, so that you can get alignment and then you can get prioritization and your team won't be overloaded as much as they tend to be. 
And that is it for me. All righty. Um, a couple of questions about how you guys are measuring um, the success of product marketing and if uh, all the budgets are getting cut next year and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, how are we justifying product marketing and, and, you know, measuring the impact? Yeah. So the way I think about it is, you know, sales is your first uh, barrier to go to market. If your sales team is not bought into what you are trying to convey to marketers or excuse me, to prospects. Um, and if they don't feel that it is uh, aligned with the conversations that they're having, you know, that's a problem. But of course, like any product marketer, you can't just take one source of data as the truth. So I go to Gong and I listen to what is happening during the conversations. Um, and then I, you know, adjust product marketing assets as needed. What I have noticed in the last year is that you can't really set your messaging for, um, you can't really set your messaging um, and then leave it for a year you have to review it every quarter um, because of environmental factors, because of, uh, you know, whatever is happening in the world, the economy is taking another turn or, you know, uh, technology is having a meltdown, whatever the, the case is, you have to consider those macro factors and you have to readjust your messaging, keeping true to your positioning. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm just constantly, revising my messaging so that I am uh, on target with the times. How long have you been at uh, Uberflip? Uh, since April uh, of 2022. So I'm quite new to Uberflip, but I'm mm. long in the tooth in product marketing. Uh, I re when, I, when I think of Uberflip and messaging, uh, I'm reminded of that uh, article by Andy Ruskin. Maybe you've seen the strategic narrative thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's like, hey, Uber flip, you know, look at that, you know, role model or strategic narrative. Uh, and since uh, since uh, that post, which is, I think, five years old or, or something, you guys have completely shifted back to where um, to not competing on narrative, seemingly, but on uh, we're better, faster, uh, easier and more beautiful because you say we're number one. So what, what changed? Yes. Yeah, well, uh, I can't speak to the team uh, that was here before me, but mm -hmm. that is one of the things I'm going to be changing because I really think we do need to speak about the value to the, the marketer and the value of content to the organization overall. Um, so I don't like to use vanity metrics to gain attention. I like to mm -hmm. use value-based business outcome. So I'll be switching back to more of a narrative approach and why, uh, you know, why under why your content is still king and why you should be investing in content um, for the long for the long haul. So stay this tuned. This content experience category is interesting for me. It's uh, I'm not too familiar with the category at all. Mm -hmm. um, do your customers also call it that? Yeah, they call it a lot of things. Um, they call it content management. They call it digital experience. They call it digital content management. They call it a resource library. They call it a hub. They call it a web page. So it's, uh, I, I'm not too fussed about the category necessarily as I am about the value to the customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, like, well, you know what is a category, right? Like people want to just understand, yep. create context around, like put put you in a box. Um, and they so, do, um, but if you look at Forrester, Forrester says content mm -hmm. experience platform. Gartner says digital ex, digital uh, experience or content management. So mm -hmm. when you have two analyst firms who can't make a decision, then I I would not expect my uh, my audience to understand either one of those. And frankly, I'm don't yeah. tell anybody, but I'm not really, again, too fussed about that. <laughs> no, totally. And probably the, the uh, your average customer is not even aware that those categories exist, right? Um, Correct. Yeah, because it's That's we're right. talking 
mental constructs, it's all imaginary, right? That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, well, Maureen, thank you so much for sharing your lessons with us. I really enjoyed it. Um, Thanks so well, much. Uh, everybody, give uh, Maureen a follow on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll see you on, on the internet. All right. Bye-bye.